be honest with you, I, I put it off and try to put it off a lot because it, it, uh, it's really not a pleasant thought. And it's not a thought a lot of people like to think about. If you'll search the Bible, you'll find that God's prophets in the Old Testament, all the preachers, apostles and pastors and preachers in the New Testament spent a lot of their time warning people about sin and the consequences of sin. Um, this modern generation of preachers do, do not do that. It's bad for money, crowds, popularity, but in the Bible, all the Old Testament prophets spent a great deal of time, a great deal, warning people of the consequences of sin. Now, I'm going to do that this morning. In 1 John chapter 5, I'm going to use a very hard verse of Scripture. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And you look at verse number 15. And we know that we hear, if he hear, that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and help, shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not pray, say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. I want to preach this morning on the subject, flirting with the undertaker. Flirting with the undertaker. Let me start by saying this morning that God is good. God is a good God. If he wasn't, me and you wouldn't even be here today. God is good. There's no doubt about that. And we ought to be glad that he is. But we have lived to see the day when people have this attitude that God is so good that he'll just let you do anything you want to without any kind of consequences whatsoever. And that is a false, unbiblical view of God. That is not the Bible picture of God. I, people say, well, well, uh, would you let somebody go for hell forever? And I say, no, I wouldn't. They say, well, look at you. You wouldn't do it. You think God would? You know why I would and wouldn't and God would? I'm not as holy as he is. You got to remember of all God's attributes, and he has a lot of them. Attributes are his holiness, his love, his kindness, his gentleness, uh, his, his, his uh, dealings with people. Of all God's attributes, the main attribute God has is holy. And everything else is subservient to that holiness of God. People say, well, I don't believe God would let something like that happen to somebody. He's loving. He is loving, but above his loving, he's holy. God is so holy, he does not allow any sin in his presence. Down just a tad on that. And uh, God doesn't allow it, and he won't, he won't punish. And God does punish people. Now, people say, well... God accepts me just as I am, and, and I must accept and love myself. How many, how many, you hear that all the time. He said, I come to, to love myself. I must learn to love myself. You didn't get that out of the Bible. Uh, you, most of y'all don't need no help loving yourself. Most people I know have no, need no encouragement in that area right there. We're living in a generation of people that's crazy over their self. And selfies, selfies, that's all. They live for themselves. Eat for themselves. Work for themselves. Your, your job is not to learn how to love yourself. Your job is to learn how to love God and serve him, and then he will accept you. Right, you've got to remember, he's holy. He will not smile on. He will not overlook. He will not turn a deaf ear or his head to your sin. This holds true for Jew, Gentile, saved, lost, church, anybody, anywhere, anytime. It's a world universal truth. God will not just look, turn his head when you sin. There's a lot of, there's a lot of controversy here. And a lot of people have this idea that 
God, I had a man tell me one time, he said, they said, well, so-and-so and God killed them. He said, no, 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 no. God wouldn't kill nobody. That's what they said. God wouldn't kill nobody. They said, God, there's no way the Lord, they said, the devil kills everybody that gets killed. The devil does it and all that. Well, you are, you are showing an extreme ignorance of the Bible if you believe that or say that. I'm going to show it to you. I'll give you a bunch of scriptures in the Bible where God. In Genesis, you don't have to turn to it, but write it down. Genesis 38, 7. Genesis 38, 7, before the law. God's Bible said that uh, God, there's a man of the name of Ur who was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. What is that? You ain't going to get it no plainer or simpler than that. Here's a man that was wicked, and God killed him. You say, that's not the God I believe in. Well, it's the God of the Bible, and it's the God I believe in. I, I wouldn't want a God that tolerated sin. Amen? Wouldn't you hate to go to heaven, and there's Hitler and drug dealers and everybody else up there, and we'll get the same mess up there forever that we got down here? He's not, he's not like that. Uh, in Numbers chapter 16, verse 21, during the law, the Bible, oh, uh, there's a bunch of people rebelling in the congregation. And you know what God told Moses? He said, separate yourself from the congregation that I may consume them. God said, I'm going to kill the whole blessed bunch of them. And Moses said, now, now Lord, don't do that. I'm praying for them. So God said, all right, get away from uh, uh, Korah. The, the leader of the rebellion, and y'all get over them, and they got on one side, and Korah and his crowds on the other side, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them, people. That happened. That's a historical fact. The God of the Bible allowed that to happen. It's all the way through there. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. All the way through. In the New Testament, uh, I'll give it to you again in a minute, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. You want it in the New Testament? I gave it to you before the law. I gave it to you during the law in Numbers. Now I give it to you after the law in the age of grace. 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. Uh, there was a man in the, in, the, in the New Testament church and he was writing to the Corinthians. So you, it, it, it's hard to prove that fellow wasn't saved. Because Paul wrote, said, there is among you, among the church. And uh, he, he was a saved man. You say, I don't believe a man could be saved and shack up with his father's wife. That would be his mother-in-law. And you say, oh, yes, sure did. And the Bible said uh, they turned him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. You say, well, see, there it said Satan killed him. It didn't say he killed Ananias and Sapphira. Acts chapter number 5, there's a man by the name of Ananias. His wife was named Sapphira. And during that time, the spirit was so strong in the churches that people were just, I mean, they were into it. People were selling land and stuff, and there wasn't no pressure. It wasn't like these TV preachers saying, sell everything you got. They did it willingly. They were willingly doing it. And they said, man, I've loved the Lord so much, and i got 100 acres out here. I ain't never going to use all this. I'm just going to sell it, give them money, send these apostles out and preach the gospel. And they did it because they want to. They wasn't brainwashed in a cult. They, they did that because they wanted to. And everybody started giving and bringing their money like that. Well, there's this one man, him and his wife, Ananias and Sapphira, him and her sat down one night and they said, uh, you know, honey, uh, everybody, everybody in church is, is giving a lot of money and everything and, they, and they're going to look at us weird if, if we don't do something. And she said, well, what do you think we should do? And he said, well, I, you know it's going to have to do whatever you say, so I'm waiting on you to tell me. And she said, uh, 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 oh, no, I'm in subjection. And I said, yeah. He said, yeah, I know, as long as I do whatever you say. And uh, she said, uh, they sit down there and they begin to talk and, and they, they say, come up with this plan. And they had 50 acres of land. And they sold their 50 acres of land for uh, uh, $2,000 an acre and got $100,000. And uh, it wasn't very valuable land, but they got $100,000. And uh, they got this 50 acres of land, and they sold it for $100,000. And they come in, and boy, they come in that day, and they come into the church, and they brought in the church, and Dad and I come in, he said, Peter, he said, I just want to give a testimony. I just love the Lord this morning. And Peter, the Lord, me and, me and, 
me and honey got to pray the other night. God just blessed us so good. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give $50,000 to the church. We sold all our land. And here's the money we sold it. And we're giving it all to the church. 50. Now somebody tell me what he done wrong. He lied, didn't he? He lied. Did he lie? Say amen. amen. You say, my goodness, man gave 50000 That would have been great if he had just said that's what he had. But he said, we sold all our land, and here's the money. He said, well, he didn't say all of it. It's funny how you can lie without lying, ain't it? He gave the impression that it was lie. You know, you don't have to say a lie right out of your mouth. Boy, like the old Ruckman said, he said, he said if God killed everybody that did that next Sunday morning, they'd be dead bodies from here to San Diego, where he's from. I mean, you couldn't walk stepping over a dead Christian. But the Spirit was so strong in that church. You know what old Peter did? He said, Ananias, why are you doing this? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? He said, that was your land. You didn't have to sell it. You didn't even have to give nothing if you didn't want to. You've done come in here and lied, boy. And he said, you know what? Heavy, heavy doesn't hang over your head, son. Uh, It's over. The jig's up. I mean, you're gone. And about that time, the Spirit of the Lord went, bam, and killed him. He fell over dead. And the Bible said the young men came in and wound him up. They wrapped him and took him out and buried him. You ever heard that old saying, that about winds him up? That's where that comes from, right there. Wind up don't ain't the end. You know, if somebody died, you wouldn't say, well, that winds you up. Winds up something you do to get it started. Like a watch. Why would we say that? Wind up don't mean start. Stop, it means start. But it, the Bible determines what th- stuff means. And so that winds him up. That's the end of it. And so they wound him up. And, and, uh, and the Bible said three hours later, his wife came in. They had to drive separate camels that morning because she wasn't ready to go. She was never ready to go. He was already three hours later. That's proof in the Bible. I mean, uh, all that stuff's in the Bible. It takes a woman three hours longer to get ready than it does a man. And if you got a man that takes longer to get ready than you do, I would really worry about that man. There's something wrong with that man. Uh, but anyway, if he has to primp, buddy, and put Lord makeup on, you're in trouble. Uh, but anyway, uh, here she comes in, and Sapphire comes in. She's got that hair all dolled up about right there, and it's purple. And I mean, she's got earrings hanging uh, way down here like that. And she comes down, and hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, she makes her entrance. She don't come to Sunday school. She comes in about 11 o'clock, and boy, here she comes down the aisle, and she said, hallelujah, hallelujah, Brother Peter. Brother Peter, uh, uh, where's my husband? And they said, uh, he's out. <laughs> he's out He's out there on the hill somewhere. What's he doing out on the hill? Uh, never mind. What's, what's the problem, sister? She said, oh, hallelujah, I guess Peter done told you. We sold all the land and gave all the money to the church. He said, you shouldn't have said that, honey. I gave you your chance to be honest and you wouldn't. I gave you a chance right there and now the feet of them that carry your husband out there they're going to hit you. Bam! God killed her. You say, I don't like that. I don't know what to tell you. It's like beating your head on that thing right there. It ain't going to do you no good. God does take a person's life for sinning. It's all through the Bible. Now, let's bring it home a little bit. Bring it home. How are you flirting with the undertaker? You're here this morning. You may be flirting with the undertaker. You say, well, preacher, I've been living like this for years and nothing bad ain't happened yet. You, you, got, the, you got the magic word right there, yet. The Bible, the Lord's long suffering. He'll put up with a lot of junk for a long time. But, buddy, he, the wheels of God's judgment grind slow, but they grind exceeding sure and fine. And, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you three thoughts this morning, and I'm going to let you go. I know this is not a message that people's going to love all over. The, I understand that. I understand people hate preaching like this. I'll be honest with you, I would hate to sit and listen to this message myself. But it's true, and we need it. When you go to the doctor, he don't give you medicine that you like. He, your medicine don't taste like candy. Brother, your medicine don't always taste good, but you need it, and it's good for you. I want to say three things. Number one, 
unconfessed sin. The Bible said in Proverbs 28, 13, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but him that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Are you listening to me? Uh, in, the, in the Bible, in Joshua chapter number 7, there's a story of the study of Joshua. You ought to read those Old Testament stories. They were getting ready to go in and take over uh, the city of Jericho. And when they did, Joshua told them, uh, God told them, he said, now when you go in there and take over these cities, he said, you, you kill everybody there, everybody there. These people that don't even understand the Bible try to say God's a, has practiced genocide and, and God's a murderer. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Things were different back then. Those cities were eat up with diseases, animals and people diseases all together. And the only way people lived would be to exterminate the whole crowd. They did it to their self. And so don't, don't, don't make stupid statements like, I wouldn't believe in a God that killed people. You just, you ain't got no sense. You're not even the first base yet as far as knowing what God is and who God is. That had to be done. That had to be done. Things were different back then. And uh, uh, they went in there and he said, now don't you take nothing. Don't you touch nothing in there. It's contaminated and you leave it alone. And the Bible said there's one man, O Achan, he went in there like this and he saw a goodly Babylonish garment, nice suit of clothes. He saw uh, 50 shekels of silver and gold, money. And he took it and he hid it under his tent and stole it. That's for anybody in here who's got something stole or hid and you think you're going to hide it long time and at the right time you're going to bring it out. Or you're doing something wrong and stealing. Or if you're lying or you told the police a lie. There's a man called me one night I don't know if he, he's just drunk or what, but he confessed something very bad to me. And I said, if that's true, you need to go to the police department. He said, if I do, they'll put me in prison. And I said, if it's the only way you can be right with God is just admit what you've done, own up to it, get it right, take your punishment, and get it over with. And buddy, that guy, I don't know whatever happened to him. I, he called me the next day when he was sobered up and said, uh, I, I, I wasn't right. What I told you last night wasn't true. I, I said, okay, I, I just let it go. He don't even live around here no more. I don't know whatever happened to him. But it was bad. And you know what Achan did? He hid that stuff under his tent. And then the Bible said, that God, told, God told Joshua, he said, now Joshua, there's sin in the camp. And I ain't going to bless that place no more because somebody in there done something wrong. You know, back then they, they cast lots and that was their way of finding out who done stuff. And they did that and Achan, he, he took Achan. And they said, man, what what'd you do? And he said, I'll tell you, I, I stole that stuff and I done wrong and I tried to hide it and I put it under my stuff and I, I hate it, preacher, and I'm sorry. And he said, the Lord shall trouble thee this day. And they stoned that man and killed him. Death penalty. The death penalty unconfessed sin. Drugs? Are you a closet drug addict? And you think it's all right because you get them from a doctor and it makes it legal? I'm telling you, you should have heard that phone call I had last night. This lady said, Brother Danny, it's killing all my friends. People are over to... I'm not talking about crack. I'm not talking about meth. I'm talking about legal Drugs that you get from a drugstore. I'm telling you, you unconfess that. You say, well, I'm just going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep doing it. You are flirting with a tombstone. God will take your life. God will take your life. You kids. You kids in here this morning, you have the opportunity of going where us adults could never go when we were your age. The internet. There wasn't no such thing. We was a whole lot better off than you are. The internet ain't made the world a better place, people. It has been used a few things for good, but 90% of it's trash, and you know it's trash. 
You think you can sit in your room at night and get underneath your covers and mom and daddy don't know it and you can look at every filthy, wicked, ungodly sin that's going on out there in the world, unconfessed sin. It'll get you in more trouble than you'll ever get out of. I know this is not a shouting message, but I'm telling you, God put this on my heart. Somebody here flirting with the undertaker. We'll be rolling your body down this aisle here pretty soon and right there, and I'll be preaching your funeral. Two, an unclean life. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1 said, Having therefore these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Amen. Amen. I know this is old-fashioned, buddy. I know this in a shouting message, but I'm telling you, uh, you one, one, one boy said this. He said, uh, I was a closet homosexual for years and years and I finally came out and now it's just, it's just wonderful to, to be who I really am. Okay? So you're telling me that a, a killer or a pedophile should just come out and be who they are? Oh no, oh no, no. Listen, buddy. Listen. If, if every one of us gave in to every one of the desires we've ever had, brother, they, they, we'd all be in jail or hell one by now. You can't just, you know what you are? You said, I want to be who I am. I'll tell you what you are. You're a depraved sinner with, a, with, a, with flesh that's capable of murder or rape or robbery or any sin in that book right there. Every one of us are. You can't just do, well, I just feel like I'm, Suppressing my desire. Okay, if a man's got a desire to want to do perverted stuff, is he supposed to suppress that? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Unclean life. Let me read you scripture. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. For if we, you, Christians, you think Romans 8, 13 ain't the Christians? If you live after the flesh, you shall die. You say, that meant, Brother Danny, that means spiritually. That ain't what it said. If you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. See, some of you have been backslid so long, you think you and God's got this little deal. You get drunk every now and then. You get high uh, three or four times a month. You ain't hurt nobody. Everything's all right. And what you don't know is God's just giving you one more chance. One more chance. One more chance. And about the time you think you've got it away with it, Bam! There comes the axe. The car wreck. The heart attack. You say, you saying every time anybody has a car wreck, God's judgment? No, I am not saying that. People that live right have heart attacks and, and have car wrecks and serve God. I'm not saying every time that happens it's God's judgment on somebody. But sometimes it is. Sometimes it is, y'all. It is. You can't deny it. You can't read the Bible and tell me that don't happen. A man one time on an airplane years ago, and uh, he'd stole a bunch of watches, real valuable watches, and put them around. He had a vest on over it, and he's sitting there, and about halfway through the flight, I guess the cabin pressure and stuff got to him, and he started saying he's suffocating. He started hollering, I'm suffocating. Somebody help me, I'm suffocating. And they'd go, if I make, they landed and got him off that plane, and he died. And they took him down there, and they said that the, all them watches around his body had constricted his breathing, and it killed him. And you hear stuff like that, and you say, see there? If he hadn't have done that, he'd still be alive. And that's true. That's true, he would. Every, every time somebody dies, you can't say, well, that killed him. You can't. And, and it's not our judgment to make, but according to the Bible... And according to the Bible, you can mess around and mess around and provoke God and keep doing wrong and keep doing wrong and keep doing wrong and finally shorten your life on this earth. David's son, Absalom, perfect, perfect example of it. Number three is an unsurrendered will. You just refuse to live right. You refuse to get saved. Your problem is, here's your problem. Your problem is this. You know good and well what you're doing is wrong, and you just absolutely refuse to quit. You say, well, everybody sins. I, we all got our, uh, 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 that's true. Everybody does sin, but that gives me no right or you no right to have a little pet sin somewhere that we hide 
and refuse to get right with God. You probably try to say that. You take a get-up pill, a stay-up pill, a stay-going pill, a deal-with-the-kids pill, a deal-with-the-husband pill, slow-down pill, lay-down pill, a sleep pill, another stay-asleep pill, and then have to get another pill to wake up. You're a junkie legally. First John chapter 5 and verse 16 said, There is a sin unto death. Down yonder in Stone Mountain, Georgia, there's this big old round stone, like a big mountain. You've heard me talk about it before. And I've seen it. I've never been on it, but I've seen it a lot of times flying into the airport. And they say that some boys got down there one time. And imagine walking on a big old ball about 50 times as big as this church. And they say that you walk over the edge like this, like this, like this, like this, and, you, and it's round. And you take one step too many, and then you can't pull back. And they fell off there to the death. And that's the way sin is. You take a step, everything's all right. Take another step, everything's all right. You do it again next weekend, everything's all right. You do it again the next weekend, everything's all right. And one time, that step puts you over. I knew a boy, got saved, lived right, and God called him to preach. And he preached faithfully, read his Bible, and witnessed all the time. Never missed a church service for about a year or a year and a half. And then one day, he didn't come to church. And he got a job working the third shift at a place not far from here. And little by little, he started missing church. When people start missing church, that's always a sign, right? There's something wrong somewhere. Now, if you have to, that's problem. But here's the problem is, after you have to for a while, and then first thing you know, you won't to. Your flesh ain't no different than nobody else's. You can miss a lot of church for work, then next thing you know, when you can come, then you don't want to. And, and Bible and prayer is the same way. You don't want to. And he quit coming to church. And he worked third shift. And it tore me all to pieces because he's a good friend of mine. And I went over to his house one morning and knocked on the door. And he opened the door. I don't think he knew it was me. And he opened the door. And I stood like here. And he stood, I guess, didn't invite me in. Didn't say, come on in, Brother Danny. Good to see you. He stood right there at the door like, okay, what do you want? Let's get this over with. And I stood there and I begged him. And I said, man, you need to get right. We miss you at church. And here's what he done. He's standing there like this. And he goes, listening to me talk. Listen to me talk. I said, I love you, man. And I left that day, and it wasn't long, too long after that, somebody called me. Said he got off work, went to sleep driving home, and crossed that center line, hit another guy head on, and never even knew what hit him. Gone. His life just like that. I know another guy. I can't tell you all these stories. I know another guy did the same exact Thing with several other boys. He got killed and killed all four of them in one night. You say, preacher, are you trying to tell me? I am trying to tell you there is a sin unto death. And if you refuse to get right, hey, you used to be on fire for God, you used to do stuff in church, you used to be really right, and now you just pull back and you just, you just, you just come because the only reason you come because your, your husband wants to. The only time you come because your wife wants to. If you had your way about it, you'd be home this morning and you're just rebelling against God, rebelling against God, and rebelling against God. I'm telling you, there'll come a time when God's going to deal with you. God's going to deal with you. It's the point of no return. I know another guy. He come to church real good. And he preached a while. And then he got drunk and stayed drunk for months. He was out in the road one night. 
set up like this, and a car come flying down the road and killed, took him out just like that. I don't want that to happen to me. Now listen, I might fall over with a heart attack right here this morning. I mean, when they, none of us got no promise tomorrow. But I don't want God to have to take my life early because I refuse to live right. I want to live out my time that I've got here. I don't want my days to be shortened. You say, I don't believe in no such a thing as that, preacher. Well, you don't, you don't read your Bible very much, do you? You really don't. I'll tell you what your Bible said in Psalm 55, 23. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. They get killed early. They get killed early. Them drug dealers and drug dealers, all them old, you don't, you don't see many of them people living a long life. Every time you pick up the newspaper, every time you, it's this one overdosed. This one was killed in a car wreck. Over and over and over and over and over. I don't know what you've been doing, but whatever it is, it ain't worth the price that you're going to pay. You can be flirting with the undertaker. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. In just a minute, she's going to play. And when she does, I want you, if you're here this morning, we're not going to sing. I know it's been really quiet in here this morning. I know this is like a death sentence to some of you people, and you feel like, good night, the preacher just let me have it. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. If you'll get your heart right with the Lord this morning, you can walk out of here clean and right. I'm not saying you have to go confess every sin you've ever committed. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you're here deliberately defying the will of God for your life, why don't you get right? You don't think, I'm healthy, I'm young, preacher, nothing can't happen to me. There's been a lot of people thought that. Preacher, I, other people do stuff just as bad. You can't, you can't go by what other people do. I want you to come. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. Don't be ashamed. You say, oh, people, I ain't going to be scared. In it. I would be. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God, friend. Young lady, young man. Come on. Flirt with the undertaker. Amen. Amen. Come on. Others, 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 others right now. Come on. Come on right now. Just get out of your seat and make your way down here. Men, women, boys, girls. I mean, it's, it's full over here on this side. There's more people. They need to come. we got plenty of room over here. Why don't you come this morning? You say, preacher, I'm going to get right with God. I want to get right with God. I don't, want, I don't want the Lord to shorten my life. Good night. I don't want the Lord to shorten my life. I want to live out my time as long as He wants me here. Amen. The Lord will help you if you'll let Him this morning. He'll help you if you'll let Him. You say, well, Brother Danny, I'm, that scares me. Good night. Listen, just clear your conscience. Clear your conscience. You don't have to go tell your neighbor that you run over his dog 30 years ago. But... You have to just get your heart right with God. Get your heart right with God. Get your heart right with God. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. We're going to pray in a minute. Amen. We're going to pray in a minute. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, God, for being good to us. Lord, I thank you for this warning from the Word of God. Help us to take this warning here this morning. God, cleanse us. Lord, you know my heart. I want to be right. Lord, I don't want nothing in my life that's displeasing or wrong to you, Lord. Anything I've got, any wickedness in my life, clean it out, Lord. God, I want it to be clean and right and pure in your sight. Lord, I pray for everybody here this morning that every one of them will get the sin out of their heart. Lord, I don't know uh, what the problem is, but you do. And I pray you'd help them to make that thing right this morning and turn their back on it and refuse to, to go back to it and repent of that sin this morning. We ask in Jesus' name, help everybody on this altar today. Get the help they need. There's somebody here not saved. Speak to their heart, Lord. Save them for Jesus' sake. Hallelujah. Some still praying this morning. Still praying this morning.
God's, you know, we want to have a great youth rally. I'll tell you a good way to do it. Get all the junk out of our lives. Get all the junk out of our lives. Amen. God's a good God. He loves us. But He wants us to live right and pure. Good. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. Amen. He said, Brother Danny, I can't be I know, I know, I know. But He wants your heart to be right. He wants your heart to be right. Amen. The best you can do ain't perfect. But he, he, that don't mean you're supposed to wallow around in sin. You know that. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. Make up your mind this morning. The Lord's coming first. The way I act, the way I dress, the places I go, the things I do, my music, my the movies, everything. I want to put him first. You say, well, that's asking a lot. Okay? Suit yourself. You'll be flirting with a tombstone. Amen? Amen. All right, so I'm still praying this morning.